Good afternoon. Welcome to the Valley Electric Association's District 1 meeting. I'm Michelle Caird, board president and your District 1 representative. I am calling this meeting to order. At this time, I would like to appoint Bob Sweeten as our parliamentarian. If everyone could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to present the proof of mailing notice. This past year was a challenge, but our staff worked tirelessly to keep the lights on and our communications running smoothly. They sacrificed time with family and friends to work through the logistics of additional safety protocols and practices during a pandemic. New members received broadband, homes were built, and the office employees were there to answer questions. Our staff is dedicated to our company and serving the membership. I personally want to thank each and every one of them. Though there were many challenges during the year, we continued to meet our members' needs and started our newest division, Soul Power, Valley Electric Solar Company. Members interested in learning more about solar for home or business are encouraged to contact Soul Power staff. They will provide you with a quote or answer any questions you may have about solar. Our committees that were formed in 2019 continued the, to work on VEA issues and concerns, meeting many times with Zoom. It was one positive action that came from the pandemic. Our committee members that live as far away as Fish Lake Valley did not need to drive six hours for a two hour meeting. The four member focused committees, member liaison, finance, policy and charitable foundation met regularly during the year. The committee's work included the policy committee members reviewing all the policies and updating them. Those policies will soon be posted on our website for members to reference. The finance committee members met monthly to review the financial reports between before those being presented to the board of directors and the members at our monthly board meetings. Our Charitable Foundation members are continually looking for ways to help organizations within our communities. Request form for donations can be found on our website. This year, we again have changes to the bylaws that were suggested by the Member Liaison Committee and will be voted on by all Valley Electric members. I encourage you to review the changes and please vote. It is the dedication and hard work of all of the committee members that have helped our staff and board of directors better serve the members of Valley Electric. The board of directors and management are working together to accomplish our strategic goals of being an industry leader in member and customer satisfaction, building financial strength and providing safe and reliable service. We are moving Valley Electric forward and encourage our members to become involved. At this time, I would like to introduce you to Mark Stallins, our CEO. It's always a pleasure to meet with you. It's always uh, enjoyable and uh, glad to be here this evening. I'd like to share a little bit, looking back toward 2020, what the accomplishments were, and then also like to look forward to 2021 and share a little bit of good news there with you also. What I'd like to start with is uh, a year ago, we, we did strategic planning with the board of directors and we laid out goals and we laid out an action plan on how we wanted to move forward in 2020 and 2021. We've made good progress on all fronts in the, uh, with that strategic plan, with that action list. So I wanna share a little bit with you uh, this evening about where we are and what we've accomplished and, and where we're, we want to move forward. I had four metrics that I use, four measurements uh, to determine are we best in class. And uh, the first one I wanna talk about is member satisfaction. Uh, specifically, uh, the directors in the planning process called it being an industry leader in member and customer satisfaction. And so we laid out four different action items to go with that uh, goal. 
And uh, the first one was to improve the member experience through process improvement and technology. Uh, we put in a new phone system. We also worked on our process improvement in, in the customer service and the billing areas. There were actually 90 different improvements we wanted to make with our software that would make our processes much better. We did accomplish all of those. We're also working to improve our service order management system using new software, uh, using uh, service apps and, and going to paperless system and then using iPads in the field. We also worked hard on, on how we communicate with you, our members, as well as ex internally with our employees. Uh, we launched what we call Circuit Chatter, which is a monthly article which we give to the, our, our employees talking about what's going on at the co-op to keep them engaged. We also changed our intranet, which is a social media platform internal to uh, Valley Electric for our employees where we can share what's going on in all the departments so that everybody knows where we are and what's, what's happening. I think probably one of the biggest things we did from a member satisfaction standpoint is we conducted two member surveys. One was in the summer and one was in the winter. And we did this so that we could benchmark how we compare to other co-ops. One of our third goals was to identify community involvement and communicate our successes. Uh, we had a lot of action there, especially from the uh, involvement uh, standpoint. Uh, we raised 30,000 in our Fill the Bucket and Trojan Trunk campaigns. And we did a lot of fundraising for the food banks that, and both of those were highly successful in 2020. Lastly, we wanted to develop products and services to meet the member needs. Uh, the Soul Power, the launching of our solar company was a huge effort last year. I'm proud to an announce that that is going very, very well. Uh, we've installed our first uh, solar system back in the fall of 2020, and we're now uh, upwards uh, in, the, in the 20s, and we've got a lot of sales in the pipeline, and, and we're moving forward in building market share in that rooftop solar market. We also expanded into putting uh, solar panels on the ground mount systems, and we're also working with our large power customers in the uh, solar arena as well. Uh, the effort there really was to recapture that market share. Quite frankly, 5% of our members have rooftop solar, and uh, we don't wanna just give that market away. We wanna fight and compete for that market to keep that solar revenue within the Valley Electric family, as opposed to not competing and just giving it away. Soul Power's working hard uh, to earn that business, to earn that market share, and we're doing very well in that launch effort uh, and continue to grow that business. So from a member satisfaction standpoint, I wanted to talk a little bit about what the survey results were. Uh, you'll see a slide here that, that uh, that shows that Valley Electric survey in the winter of, of 2020, 2021, our score was a 76 score. And we benchmark that against what municipal utility scores are on average, that's a 72. And then what investor owned utility, what their scores look like on average, and that's a 72 as well. Touchstone Energy co-ops, which number about 700 co-ops, the average score of those co-ops is 74. So when we compare Valley Electric at a 76 score, we're better than average. Now that's not best in class. Best in class would be where our stretch goal is, which is 80. Now 80, I commonly like to say, if you have a score of 80, you're better than chocolate. Uh, it's a little bit of tongue in cheek. Uh, I'm referring to the, the Hershey's company, their average ACSI score is 80. Our target, is 78. Your target's always going to be better than where you are today. But 76, we were thrilled to have a 76 score. But we don't want to stay at 76. We don't want to be average. Our goal is to be best in class. So that's our focus for 2021. That's what we're looking forward to. That's what we're striving to, forward to. The second goal that the board set was to build financial strength. And when we talk about building financial strengths, we identified five action items, five objectives that the board uh, charged the management team to achieve and work towards. That first one is to manage cost across all business lines. 
we implemented project accounted for. The budget in the past was basically managed by the CFO and the CEO. What we did in 2020 was we took our budget, we broke it up into roughly 30 different budgets. And so every department manager that has a significant number of people working for them, they now have a budget and they're accountable for that budget. They develop that budget. Every month we meet and we monitor what our spending is. We want to make sure that we're spending every dollar well and that, that uh, everything we do uh, has a purpose, has a meaning, has an importance, and the dollar is well spent. The next uh, objective set by the board was to ensure rate structures are equitable to all members. We are working with our, uh, our lenders and we're doing a cost of service study right now. Uh, we, we, will, we will be moving forward with that cost of service, probably gonna complete it first part of uh, June. Uh, we will then at that point move into looking at all the rates to ensure that they're equitable and fair. And uh, well, there'll be more to come on that project, but it's been launched and we are working hard toward that. Increased revenue across all business lines. I'm pleased to say that, that we are $600,000 ahead of 2020 in revenue gains in 2021. So the revenue is growing. We'll talk a little bit more in the next slide about where the broadband revenues are, but electric revenues are looking good. Soul power is growing. So our revenues are on the climb the fourth objective is to manage capital expenditures, to manage what we invest in poles and lines and fiber and in solar systems. Pleased to say we're on budget. We, were, we met the budget in 2020 and we're on budget in 2021 in that area. Lastly, we wanted to update policies and procedures. Uh, the board just recently approved 90 policies on March 5th, 2021. It was an update of those policies. The second round, we're looking at financial policies and energy risk management policies. We're also developing board procedures and we're also doing similar with our employee policies and our employee procedures. So from a financial strength, we had an excellent year in 2020. Uh, and Steve is gonna talk more about that later on, so I don't wanna steal his thunder. But I do wanna share this graph with you this is a, a metric we look at from a financial perspective. We call it controllable costs per consumer. As you can see, those costs peaked in 2017 and they've been on a downward trend ever since then. Uh, significantly dropped from 1432 in 2017 down to, to a 1040, 1040 in 2020. We're working hard to continue to make that number as low as we can. I'd like to move on to another slide. This here shows five years of power supply cost. You'll see that it peaked there at 99.56. Uh, the 91 was a high point number as well. Uh, those are monthly power costs. On average though, the, uh, the power costs have been pretty stable. 2018, of course, was the year when they bought out of the power supply contract. Our power supply has been stable since then, uh, looking looking reasonable when I look at 2020. Uh, when I look at the summer of 2021, uh, power supply costs uh, are possibly going to be challenging. We're working hard to manage those costs today. Uh, and uh, we're also working on programs uh, to uh, conserve energy, to manage energy, and to do our best to keep costs as low and to give you opportunities to help us keep power supply costs low. So a little bit of year to year comparison. I talked about broadband revenue was on the climb, has been growing and increasing. Our number of accounts, subscribers, that's increasing as well. And you would expect that to happen if the revenues are increasing. We've also launched a new product, our VoIP product, which we would like you to take a look at. Uh, we know you can save a lot of money by using a voice over internet protocol for your telephone services. So we'd encourage you to take a look at that if you haven't already. If you're not on Valley Broadband, we'd in encourage you to take a look at that as well. But uh, year to year comparisons, January 2021 to January 2020, it's a 5.2% increase in monthly revenue. February 9.3, March 11.63. 
So the broadband business has been growing, continues to grow. This is a graph that gives you uh, 2020 uh, subscriber or revenue numbers, and then also shows you the targets for 2021. The targets are those dash lines, and you can see those lines are growing, they're moving upward, and so far we're on target on 2021 broadband revenue as well. So uh, things are looking good on that revenue front. Our third goal that was set by the board was to provide safe and reliable service. In this area, I can, I can uh, say that we are best in class in terms of reliability. Uh, the reliability numbers at Valley Electric are the best of any co-ops uh, I've ever seen. And that's a lot of positive things for the employees who have been working for years and years to build a reliable system. You don't get reliability numbers that Valley historically shows without having built it over a long period of time. So we wanna to continue to plan for future growth. We wanna prepare for electric vehicles. We see that as being a big state initiative and we want to be ready for that. Uh, we see it as being a nationwide initiative as well. We're, we completed a line safety system protection plan has been put into place. And a big thing is uh, we've launched safety trailer training for, for uh, uh, firemen, for local uh, fire departments and for other groups. Uh, I was this morning attended a safety training with the uh, Pahrump Fire Department, was pleased to be there and was pleased to meet all of them. But that safety trailer training has been huge. The trailer was built, developed last year, and the training program is being launched this year. Broadband reliability plan was put into place. Uh, the big challenge in 2020 on broadband was making sure we had capacity uh, for people working from home. COVID put a big stress on the system. We knew we had a lot of capacity on the bandwidth backhaul, uh, and so we wanted to make sure uh, we were utilizing and could utilize all that space. One of the things we did do was we increased core router capacity, and then we've developed a capital improvement team that's been meeting the last few months, looking at how we can grow capacity for our members who want more throughput, they want more broadband capability, and uh, more to come on that as well. When I talk about reliability, uh, this graph uh, really deals with electric reliability. Uh, it's called average outage duration per member. And uh, that number was 32 minutes in uh, 2020. That's one of the lowest minutes I've seen in any co-op. It's an excellent number. And as you can tell, this graph is running from January to uh, December. The orange is 2020, the blue is 2021. Our numbers in 2021 are better than the 2020 numbers year to date. A lot of that's weather related. If you get good weather, you're gonna have good reliability. So uh, we look forward to uh, continuing on a reliable electric service. The second metric we look at in terms of electric reliability is average number of outages per member. Sometimes we'll call it safety. And uh, again, you'll see that that number has been very low and uh, the green line indicates 2022 numbers, which are better than 2021. Again, 2021 numbers were, were excellent numbers. We'll move on to the uh, broadband net network reliability. Uh, we're looking at system-wide numbers here. Our stretch goal is five nines. Our target is four nines. And when I say four nines, I'm referring to 99.99% uptime, meaning the system is up and running to four nines, 99.99. That's the target. The threshold is 99.9. The stretch, five nines, 99.999. If I look at our 11 month reliability average, uh, looking back over the last 11 months, we'll see that we're at three nines, 99.947. So that's an excellent number. Uh, we want to continue to grow that number and to improve that number. Our 2020 year-to-date average is 99.979, a little bit better than the 11-month average. But again, so we're meeting that threshold standard of three nines. We want to grow that to four nines and then ultimately to five nines. The last priority set by the board was to develop a culture of excellence. And what I'm talking about this is 
is really how we do our work at Valley Electric. If we have a culture of excellence within our employee base, we're gonna be financially sound. We're gonna be reliable in terms of electric and broadband providing service. And we're gonna be financially sound. We're gonna have member satisfaction, but it all starts with the culture. It all starts with how we do our work. And so our goal is, is to have a culture of excellence. We've made good progress on that in all fronts. We've been working hard at it for the last year, working hard the first three months of this year. Safety is always the premier uh, measurement for a culture of excellence. Uh, this is an area where, again, we're best in class. There is just no doubt that we are best in class. This is a great graph we just uh, put up on the screen so you can look at it. The green line is valley from a historical perspective. We take you back to 2011. In 2011, we were best in class. Uh, and you may ask, what do you mean best in class? I'm gonna share the red line. The red line is the top co-ops. It's the average of the top tier co-ops in the nation. And you'll see that number hovers close to zero. And so if you're best in class, what that means is you're gonna have no lost time accidents or close to no lost time accidents. You'll see Valley was not best in class back in 2012, 2013. 2014, we were a little bit above the red line. Uh, 2015, still above it. 16, still a little bit above it. When we got to 2018, we dropped down to zero lost time incidents for the year. We've stayed there through 2019 and we've stayed there through 2020. For the last two years, we've had zero lost time accidents. There's only one way you accomplish that. And what that means is the workers are committed. The employees at Valley Electric are committed to working safe. Huge accomplishment. Not every co-op does this. Big thank you to the employees for that achievement and keep up the good work, uh, men and women of Valley Electric working safe. It's a huge accomplishment. A big thank you for that accomplishment. Let's keep the good stuff rolling here. I wanna share next slide, which is HR metrics. Training is key to developing a culture of excellence. You have to train, you have to have good processes in place to be consistent with excellent culture, excellent member service. And so training is a, is a huge emphasis in 2020, and it's a huge emphasis moving forward 2021 as well. This graph shows where we are on training in different areas. Obviously, we're shooting for 100% moving training through the organization. And so I uh, wanted you to know that uh, we're working hard to create a team that pulls together, works together, that's excellent in providing customer care uh, to create and make you hopefully raving fans of Valley Electric. At this time, I'd like to introduce Steve Morrison, our CFO, and he will share with you what our financial accomplishments were and where we're looking in 2021. Thanks, Mark. I'm happy to be here uh, to uh, take a few minutes to share with you the financial results of your cooperative. In the midst of everything that was 2020, we're happy to report that we uh, see very strong signs that your cooperative has, has returned to financial health. It's important to remain healthy so that we can continue to deliver on our promises to you, our members, whether it's in our transmission business that uh, interacts with billion dollar uh, energy markets uh, to deliver power to our local market, whether it's in our distribution company that delivers that power to your meter, whether that's in our communications business that delivers broadband voice and data uh, so, so you can have access to the world, or whether that's in our new business, Soul Power, where, that offers a choice uh, to you, the consumer, on your energy, on how you feed or, or, or handle your energy needs. Our communities have grown over the last five years. During that, this time, we have seen the number of electric meters installed grow an average of 2% annually. Over that same period, average electricity usage has increased more than 2.5% a year. Our communications business just last year saw an increase in subscribers of 11%. Soul Power, our newest business, as I mentioned, 
which we initiated late last year in response to our membership's demand for energy choice, has just passed $1 million in contracted sales. Revenue growth through new and innovative solutions is a critical part of financial stability. But perhaps more important is keeping costs contained. On this front, I'm happy to report that for the third straight year, we have lowered costs. Controllable costs per consumer are 27% lower than they were in 2017. Since 2016, we have reduced the per consumer debt burden by over 25%. The measurement of our ability to meet our current obligations is over 23% higher than in 2016. Finally, during that same period, the value of your membership equity has grown over 31%. Financial health needs to be supported by a healthy operational ecosystem. Together, financial and operational stability leads to reliable service. Again, we're happy to report exceptional reliability numbers for 2020 in both our electric and communications businesses. Last year, our electric grid reliability was exceptional, uh, where our average member saw virtually no grid delivery in interruptions. Our communications network uptime wasn't far behind our electric business, with the average subscriber seeing two seconds of network-related downtime in 2020. The world doesn't stay static, and the future always brings with it challenges. But your cooperative is better positioned today to face those challenges than it has been for several years. We appreciate your patience and understanding as we worked to turn Valley around to where you expect us to be. And we look forward to successfully overcoming future challenges along, alongside you, our engaged membership. Thank you for your time. And now I'll, I will turn the meeting back to Bob Sweeten, who will discuss the quorum and voting results. Hello, my name is Bob Sweeten, General Counsel for Valley Electric Association. I have here the results of the District 1 director election. These results have been tabulated by Survey and Ballot Systems, a full service election management provider headquartered in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. All results have been reviewed by a quality assurance specialist and verified by a notary public. Those results were then provided to me through a secure delivery system. The results of the District 1 director election are as follows. There were 10,824 members at the time the election opened. 2% or 217 members were required for a quorum. With 1,891 verified valid ballots, a quorum was established. With 832 votes and 44% of the vote, Michelle Caird is elected the director of District 1. Congratulations, Michelle. For informational purposes, Bill Carnes received 738 votes, or 39% of the total, and Pete Gazzi received 321 votes, or 17% of the total. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I'd like to share with you what our upcoming member events are moving forward here. Bylaw voting will open uh, May 3rd, and it'll go through June 4th, so make sure you, you vote for the bylaw changes. Um, also, we have the annual meeting. It's gonna be held virtually on June 11th at 5 p.m., and that will be posted on our website. During that annual meeting, we'll reveal the results of the bylaw election and all information about the bylaws as well as the annual meeting can be found on our website. So uh, please make sure you take a look at that. And uh, we would thoroughly enjoy your participation in both of those, the bylaw voting and the annual meeting. Next, I could talk a little bit about door prizes. In order to participate in the door prize raffle, please send an email to doorprizes at vea.coop. Make sure you include your name, your member number, and phone number. And if you don't know your member number, please make sure to include your service address instead. Uh, the winners will be personally notified by email. So it's always a, a, a pleasure to, to offer door prizes and we encourage you to, to be part of that fun and uh, hopefully you'll be the winner. So thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we look forward to meeting with you in person next year and be safe. Again, thank you for your time.